After setting up Flutter SDK in your operating system, whether it's macOS, Linux, or Windows. This time, you have to go and download Android Studio. To download Android Studio, you have to move to your browser and search for Android Studio and then click on the very first link. Then download the Android Studio latest version from here. So after installing Android Studio with the necessary SDK tools and the emulator stuff and then you open the Android Studio you will see this welcome page of Android Studio. And you will not have this new Flutter project in here because to work with Flutter and Android Studio you have to download some plugins. So directly you have to move to your plugins and search for flutter in the marketplace and then download the flutter and the other necessary tools like i have downloaded flutter assets flutter snippets and all of the other tools like this one flutter snippet and then you also have to download dart from here and also the dart to json tools and other useful snippets after your flutter and dart plugins are downloaded this time your android studio will not look very great so to make a productive theme that i have you can see for that you have to download the material theme ui this one and also the atom material icons for the directories and after this is installed what you have to do is to restart your android studio and go for creating a new flutter project from here or if you don't have this option of create new flutter project so what you have to do simply open up your terminal and go for flutter create and then name of your project so your flutter project will be created in the specified directory like such as i want to create a flutter projects and download so i will cd to downloads and then i will create flutter create and then the project name in here so my project will be created in the downloads with that name that I specified in here and then open up your project from the Android Studio. If your Flutter project is created and you don't have the material darker theme like I have one. So for that to enable all the things in the toolbar of the material theme that I have in here you have to go to the view and the appearance just take that toolbar so that toolbar will be appear with the options of with the different options of the material theme and other plugins and next if your theme is not applied on this coding area so for that you have to go to your file not the file but the settings and then go for the editor and inside the editor there you will find the color scheme inside the color scheme go to the color scheme font and then change the scheme to material darker and from here you can also select other fonts and the line height and the size and for the console font you can change this console font and the console colors from here so after that you have this productive theme set up like i have one it's material darker theme in the android studio so after setting up everything in the android studio like installing plugins, creating project, installing SDK, modifying theme and all of this stuff. So after creating the project, first of all this readme.md file will appear in front of you. And it has first of all the flutter basic, the name of our project. And then the description of our project, which we have just set default and default was a new flutter project. And here is the get started. Get started means the these instructions that how to get started with flutter. They also give some links so they can take you to the website and from there you can learn the flutter basics and also the advanced concepts from their official website flutter.dev or docs.flutter.dev so that's the readme file with some instructions and also some links and in the left corner you will see all the directories of a flutter project so as flutter is cross-platform so we can build applications for android and ios from only single code base which is dart and we have already learned the basics of dart programming language and first of all in here we don't need to touch any directory in here first of all our main focus will be on the lib directory and also the pubspec.yaml file and we are not going to touch any of these libraries first of all here we have also the test library in which we have the widget test dart library or a file we can say here is the main for the test just because that is test and there is some written test 
for the counter demo application which is located in the lib directory so we will come to this demo application in a while first let's go to the pubspec.yaml file and here that's our pubspec.yaml file which contains the metadata of a project and also is used to add some dependencies of the project so first of all here we have the our project name the description and publish to is none just because we are not publishing it right now so for now it's none and here is the environment our SDK version of Dart and here is the dependencies and dev dependencies to add some dependencies to our project and use them right away like we have the dependency of cappuccino icons so we are allowed to use the cappuccino icons in our flutter application and the dev dependency like the flutter lens so what's the difference between the dependencies and also the dev dependency so these dependencies are only required by your application in the production like when our application comes to the production mode so these will be used in here but on the other hand the dev dependencies that are only needed for local development and also for retesting so that's the difference between dependencies and the dev dependencies and here we have the uses material design to true meaning that we are going to use the material design and it is allowed by setting this true and we can also add the assets to our flutter application by uncommenting these but we will do it in the next section and here we can also add some custom funds to our application so that's all about the pubspec.yaml file that you need to know before going to the other stuff like widgets and some others so first of all let's go to the main.dart here is the demo application made by the flutter developers that is the application and let me run it in here so i run the application on the emulator as i said as an emulator we will use the Jenny motion device to run our emulator on this so you can use any emulator you like like the android emulator like this one here you can download it from here i already have this other also but i like this Jenny motion just because that is not so much laggy and is smooth to use and do not require any additional setup this is also do not require any additional setup but is laggy in some cases so anyways first of all here in the main.dart we have run our application which is a simple counter application in here there's the app bar and there's our application when we click this button so this will increment one two three four five and just like this and that is the simple application already built by flutter developers so first of all let me tell you one thing everything in flutter is called a widget so what is widget a widget is an immutable description of a part of the ui and also to make it more clear if you are already familiar with the platforms like android and ios the native development of these platforms we had the views in the android development and also the ui views in the ios development so the widgets are something like this or we can also say the widget is the way to declare or construct the ui like this this is a simple application this floating action button is also a widget this an app bar is also a widget this text inside this is a widget and this text and this text is also a widget and this is aligned vertically means it's inside the column so that column is also a widget so everything inside the flutter or in the flutter we can say is widget and then there is the parts of widget the stateless widget and also the stateful widget so what's the difference between the stateless widget and the stateful widget so the stateless widget in simple words if a widget does not do anything like do not hold any data it's also obvious from its name like it's stateless widget it does not hold any state to do anything with state changes and something like this so that is stateless widget so in simple words we can say that stat that does not do anything is said to be the stateless widget but on the other hand we have the stateful widget it's also obvious from its name the stateful widget in simple words we can also say the widget which does something means to hold the stat and do some ui changes by changing the stat of the widget like here if you open this emulator and close this keyboard when i click this so this stat it changes and update this counter by one by updating the ui means it change its stat so that's why it is called the stat
stateful widget. So that's all work we are doing in the stateful widget and we are calling this increment counter in here and we are updating the stat by the set style. You are looking to know about these methods and these widgets in more detail in a while just because now we are just understanding it that how these widgets works like the stateless and the stateful the stateful widget the widget that can hold some stat and also can change the stat by setting the stat like this and also the stateless widget which do not hold any stat and the stateless and the stat that does not do anything so that's the difference between stateless and stateful widget so here let me show you one more thing this build method override build method which return type is widget so what this build method does it's again obvious from its name to build something on the ui like the build method is only called to build the ui and it describes the part of the user interface represented by a widget like this my app stateless widget only returns the material app and that's the work of this widget so that build or return the material app for us and then in the home we are calling the my home page which is also a stateful widget and the stateful widget is again have the build method which builds all of these widgets inside this and show it up in the ui so that's the build method inside the widgets so that was all about the stateless and the stateful widgets so now let's start from this import so to deal with material design as we have seen in here in the pubspec.yaml file as this is a true means we will use the material design so we will import the material dot dot to use the material design in our app and next we have the man method you are already familiar with this man method we had used this method to run our code on the dart pad and here this man method is used to run our application it accept the widget like this so we are passing the my app widget in here and here this my app called its build and it on our material app the material app is also a widget so this material app here means the an application that uses material design in flutter must have this material app and this give us also some other widgets or properties of this like the title the title of our material app the theme property to deal with some themes in here and this property accepts a theme data which is also itself a widget and here this home property accepts again a widget and this widget has a build method here which again builds this ui and here that is the stateful widget that holds stats and here we have the variable which we are updating by calling this increment method so that was the material app and next we have here the scaffold on top of all these widgets and under the material app like here we are calling the home page so on top of that we have the material app and here this is under or inside the material app widget so these are also called the parent and the child widget like here if you see that is the parent widget and here in the body the center and some other widgets are the child widgets of that you can see that's the parent and that's the child of it and now that's the child of that parent so just like this they are divided into parent and child widget just like this and that scaffold is also a widget which is used under the material app as i said and build smooth mobile app ui and also give us many basic functionality or properties like this app bar and with some text and also some other the bottom navigation bar you will see it in the next section that how we can build the bottom navigation bar and also the drawer of the application so this ui or this app bar is provided by the scaffold so when i remove the scaffold from here like let's close this center cut this from here and paste it on this whole scaffold and put the semicolon in here now press ctrl s to hot reload which is i already had said the hot reload is the beautiful feature of the flutters like we don't have to restart the whole application just press ctrl and s on your keyboard and there you go you had reflected your changes on the emulator you can see we got this black ui 
and we cannot interact it with just like this just because we have removed the scaffold from here so that's the scaffold by ctrl z doing undo it will becomes again like this that is our scaffold widget which builds the smooth mobile app ui and also give us many functionalities so now again ctrl s and open up the emulator so our ui become again like this so that was all about the flutter widgets like everything in flutter is said to be or is called a widget and that was the stateless and the stateful widgets